right now on the National Weather Desk. Weather whiplash. While a winter storm starts its march across the country. You can't even see where the lines are on the road. It's going to uh, deliver a pretty big punch. Record heat is coming to the south and east. 30 plus degrees above the average. And speaking of heat, there's been too much for some people along the Great Lakes. I think it's going to lead to many unhappy people because they can't get outside and fish. Do you know which house plants are safe to be outside? They want to be warm and cozy just like we do. We want to be <laughs> out in the freezing cold. And it's Mardi Gras in New Orleans. We'll see if the weather will cooperate for today's parades and parties. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. And some music to get you in the spirit. Well, good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk on this Mardi Gras. I'm meteorologist Eileen Whalen, and we have a wild week of weather ahead of us. Tens of millions of Americans will be hit with a winter storm and possible blizzard conditions. There's even a risk of severe weather down south and then in the east, record warmth in just a few days. But let's start with that winter storm. It is going to be a one, two, three punch and take a look at all of the winter alerts in our Western zones, blizzard warnings for the upper Midwest and winter storm warnings expend, extending all the way down into Southern California. Also very high winds and that's going to be what's going to lead to the whiteout conditions and blizzard conditions as well. You can see this area of low pressure. One will move in and then another one right on its heels. So this is going to be potentially one of the snowiest uh, storms that we have seen through the upper Midwest in the Twin Cities. This could go down as one of the top five heaviest snowstorms in history with 15 to 25 inches of snow. And when the National Weather Service says that extreme conditions are expected, uh, that's when you really need to just heed the warnings and stay off the roads. But people in Washington State and Utah are, Utah are ready for winter weather. We have reporters from both states, starting with Lee Stoll on Squamily Pass outside Seattle. Yeah, good morning. We actually just made it up to the summit to the ski area here just a couple of minutes ago. I want to show you the road outside our window right now. This has been heavy snow that we've been seeing all the way basically from exit 47 making our way up here. You can't even see where the lines are on the road. We've got plows going back and forth in the parking lots up here. Avalanche danger is still high where we are and across Stevens Pass too. This is the drive. This is what you're going to see up on Snoqualmie Pass. We only saw a couple of plows out today, but even as we're turning here, we are the first ones making a cut through some of this snow, and it is pretty deep. Great for skiers, but again, you may want to rethink any plans if you're going into the backcountry. The snow falling right now. I took a look at the resort numbers, and it looks like they've gotten anywhere from 2 to 14 inches in just the last 72 hours, depending on the elevation of the mountain. And guys, you can see just how heavy it is still falling up here snowy winter so far another big storm will soon march across utah we're talking about a lot of snow and at times it's going to be very intense it's going to uh, deliver a pretty big punch that's a statewide punch from logan to st george and everywhere in between that said we're going to be doing everything that we can to keep the road safe but we're asking everybody to make sure that you're ready to travel in these type of conditions that's a plea from the utah highway patrol too Despite warning after warning, storm after storm, they run into careless drivers. It's frustrating because you try time and time again, we try to tell people to increase their following distance and, and reduce their speed uh, and pay attention. Well, while those regions are going to look and feel like winter, a large portion of the east is going to feel like summer, at least for one day. Meteorologist Ryan Mirando has the details. Well, we're still on par to have an extremely record breaking week. These were the afternoon highs on Monday. Really just no sign of winter here on the East Coast. And that's to really do with our jet stream pattern. It's taking a huge turn to the north and that's surging temperatures potentially 30 plus degrees above the average, especially for the areas in that dark, dark red. And we could break several records on Thursday. Each dot here shows the potential of breaking an afternoon high record stretching from Delaware to our nation's capital all the way down in to Florida in the Washington DC area they could get up to 80 degrees that would shatter the record of 78 set back in 1874 here in Macon we're forecasting a high of 83 degrees which would break the record of 82 set back last year and even in Orlando Florida they could potentially get up to 90 degrees the last time Orlando had a 90 degree day in February was in the 1960s six decades ago 
Wow. Well, in West Virginia, people are still cleaning up following devastating floods last Friday. One of the largest floods was in Milton, a town still recovering from a 2021 flood. Water surrounded several neighborhoods as well as an elementary school, but it receded in time for school to open this week. The Army Corps of Engineers has been planning to build a flood wall in Milton for some time. Now, construction has yet to begin, although their website says construction is expected to begin this year. We're ready for it. We've been re ready for several years, so, but we sure are anxious to get the flood levy. <laughs> well, firefighters spent the weekend handing out cleaning supplies to residents. The Great Lakes region has seen an unusually warm winter, leaving the ice coverage on the lakes at record lows for mid-February. And overall, lake temperatures are up by five degrees over the last 50 years. Meteorologist Heather Bricka has more from Traverse City, Michigan. This is a time lapse looking across the Straits of Mackinac Wednesday, where the ice is flowing under the bridge. But typically, that area is 90% covered in ice this time of year. Currently, the Great Lakes total ice cover is at 6%, while last week the ice cover was at 10.5%. The overall average ice cover for the Great Lakes basically averages around 39.5%. If we break it down by each lake, Lake Superior is at 4.68%, Lake Michigan's at 7.26%, Lake Huron is at 10.58%, Lake Erie at 0.9%, and Lake Ontario is at 1.62%. In addition to less ice, the overall lake temperatures are up by 5 degrees over the last 50 years. The overall maximum ice cover has decreased slightly to about 22% decline for all lakes combined from 1970 to 2020. Open water on the lake means that there is more moisture in the air, which amounts to more lake effect snowfall or rain. There's a lot of urgency by a number of Great Lakes scientists to, to collaborate and uh, start start looking at winter time. It used to be in many places, the six months of the year was winter and much of that was ice cover. We really don't know, you know, what we're losing. And there was unusually warm weather for the Austin Marathon this weekend. 18,000 runners took to the streets of Austin. And while things started out relatively mild, uh, by the afternoon, runners were dealing with 77 degree temperatures. Meteorolo meteorologist Chicago Windler has more. Running 26.2 miles is a daunting task. Marathoners can control some things like training, hydration, nutrition, sleep, and even gear. But there's one thing they can't control the weather. The road to the finish line can sometimes be smooth sailing. Oh, if you could dream it up, 45 degrees, no wind, uh, and, and nice and sunny. But lifelong runner Paris Shaw knows Mother Nature usually throws in a curveball or two. A really good runner advice here is you should be a lot more conservative early on in the race. So don't throw out your goals because of any weather condition. You can run a PR in 80 degrees, you can run a PR in 32 degrees. As runners brave the elements, race officials plan for every contingency. The things that make us nervous when it comes to weather, make us lose sleep at night, are really dangerous weather conditions. 2006, an ice storm delayed the 28 degree start. And in 1993, it hit 82 midway through the race. This year started cool and dry in the 40s, but warmed up fast. You gotta be well hydrated. You gotta uh, make sure you're drinking water 48 hours in advance, really putting it down. When you start to push 70 plus degrees for the marathoners and humid conditions is when we start to see people's perspiration just really going up and they don't, they're not realizing how much they're actually sweating and how much water they're losing. And so our medical teams are prepared for that. And the weather may have been a little too warm this year for some runners, myself included. But there's always next year at the Austin Marathon. I'm Chicago Windler for the National Weather Desk. Well, now to the Bahamas, where a daring dog took on a 12-foot hammerhead shark. It happened off the coast of Exuma, where passengers on a boat tour caught the whole thing on camera. Now, it's unclear if the dog was defending his home or just looking to play with the shark. Regardless, he escaped the incident unharmed. Well, coming up on the National Weather Desk, we're going to talk with an expert about what the weather is like on Mars. And surprisingly, it's not that different than Earth. Plus, tips on how you can prevent spring allergies. We're back after this.